everyone, James from CrowdRunner here. Just want to introduce this really quick tutorial that's going to help you get set up with CrowdRunner and get it working. So I'm going to cover how to download it, how to install it, how to enable the add-on, how to connect all your computers together, and how to make sure that they're synchronized properly, and how to render using cycles. This is a short tutorial that's not meant to be in depth, so let's get stuck into it. We're going to be using Blender 3.5 for today. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up Blender 3.5. But before I do that, I'm just going to point out that this assumes that you've already downloaded our add-on. A couple of places we can get it. You can get it from our website. So there's a download link for it. Um, depending on what subscription you're on, you'll have access to different versions. Also, you can go to Blender Market and buy it off there. There is a free version, which is, I think, this one at the moment which supports up to Blender 2.93, but we're going to be using the latest one at the time of the video, which is 063. I'm going to show you how to get this installed now into Blender and get everything working. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Blender 3.5. So let's do that. And this is going to be from a cold start. I'm only going to show one computer getting set up because the process for setting up all your other computers is exactly the same. So you probably notice I'm using Blender 3.6 now instead of 3.5. Mysteriously, my PC refused to load 3.5 even without add-ons. So for the rest of this video, I'll be using 3.6 instead. All right, shiny new splash screen for Blender 3.6. That's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and open up our preferences. And we're just going to install the add-on using the install button. I'm going to go uh, find it from my downloads. I'm going to select 063 and I'm going to just click the install button. Wait a few seconds while it unzips and then we have a new add-on, we just enable it. Now you're gonna to have to do this on all the computers you want to use. Now I've gone ahead and already done the same thing on a Mac laptop, which is sat next to me. A Mac laptop is probably not the best machine to use to add render power, but it's what I have available at the time. So the add-on will work with Mac OS, Linux and Windows, and you can use all three of those operating systems across the machines in your local network and it should all work just fine. All right, so we've got it enabled now. A couple of things that should happen. You should see all of these options appear. Um, this number should be the same for each of your computers. This is kind of like the channel which they talk to each other on. If any of these are different, then you're gonna find that you can't actually connect. So just make sure this setting is the same for all your computers. So that's the network section and port number. Come across to the render properties panel in Blender and we have a new render engine, CrowdRender and a new panel as well for CrowdRun to control everything. So you'll notice here that we're not selecting Cycles or Eevee or Workbench, we're just selecting CrowdRunner. And then we can actually choose which engine we want to render with across all of our computers. So I can choose all the computers are gonna render with Cycles or all of them are gonna render with Eevee. And here we've got a list of all the computers that we can actually use. So the local one, this actually is the computer that I'm working on right now so think local local host the machine that you're actually working on right now that's always added um, if for any reason it doesn't appear like you can see it here so it doesn't have you know this connect button or any of these other things and it's grayed out like this one so if it looks like this guy here um, you can usually just fix that by opening a new scene so if we were to press render right now, the only machine that would actually render is this one because it's showing as synchronized. This one is not connected or synchronized, but we kind of can tell it's online. Um, that's because it's actually logged into my cloud account. So if you see down the bottom here, I have a cloud account. I'm currently logged in on both of those computers. So this is the Mac laptop and this is the Windows PC we're looking at. Because both of these guys are logged in, they'll both appear here in bold showing that they're actually online. And I can actually now connect to the laptop just by pressing this little chain link icon pops up this box shows me this is the node name this is the IP address and I can just hit OK now sometimes you, this address might be missing you can either just type it in or normally what that means is you've not typed in the host name of that computer correctly so a host name is just a computer name that on the network can be resolved to an IP address so usually you know this is your computer name if you go and look it up in Windows usually you go and you know right click this PC um, click properties and it'll open up something like this and it'll tell you device name device name is another name for the computer name or host name so that's how you know what name to give things so if you don't have a cloud account you just want to add another computer you can add a node this way you can just click add node and then type in the name and if you type in the device or computer or host name correctly when you hit this button it'll automatically find what the IP address is for you don't have to type it in that way Okay, so I can get rid of that guy, and I'm going to connect now to my laptop. So I just press the chain link icon, I check the details, and just hit OK. 
if everything's working correctly, you should see this process go by. So it will connect, it will upload the blend file, and then it will be synchronized. So now that we've got everything synchronized, we're actually ready to render. So you can do rendering a, cup, a couple of different ways. You can either hit F12 or Control F12, or you can use Blender's render menu um, and use these controls here. So you just render as if you were using Blender normally. So we're gonna render the image. And what we'll see is up here in the output, you can see the local machine, which is this PC, and also the laptop are both rendering different chunks of this image. So that's how we speed things up. Each And each computer will take a chunk of the image and render it and pass it back to Blender to be put back into the final image. So that's how things get quicker. If we're doing an animation, it works a little bit differently. Um, each, each computer actually gets an entire frame. So you'll see both of the computers will render, but one will be rendering one frame and the other one will be rendering a different frame of the animation. And then all of those frames are sequentially loaded back into Blender when they arrive. And that way you can use this add-on to render either single frames or entire animations. Other things that you can do is you can also make some edits which will work. So for example, scale, rotate, and also transform um, is supported. You'll notice that this thing updated then when I did that. So you can see some activity here where it's actually updating the other scene. And so if I render again, we should see that the cube has been moved, scaled and rotated. And we didn't actually have to upload the blend file a second time to get that done. So that's one of the distinguishing features of Crowd Render is it has this ability to do minor updates. Um, think like render setting changes, camera setting changes, compositional changes. There are a few things it can't do though. Um, currently we don't support material changes, which is something that we're gonna work on in the future. Um, occasionally you might get lucky, but you'll notice if I don't do anything here and I render, um, we'll probably see if we um, happen to get lucky that there'll be a couple of parts of this image which are not rendered correctly. So you can see here the laptop, because we didn't update the blend file, it actually is still stuck on the old material color choice. So we can keep this and move to slot two. And the way to fix this is just to press this button here, resync, which actually publishes a fresh snapshot of the scene. So if we now render on both computers, we should get a correct image. So some of the things that you might have to troubleshoot will be if you have textures that are missing or if you have animations which are incorrect, it's probably because you need to either pack all your assets into the blend file and then once you're packed, um, you press this button, or it may be that you need to actually host those assets in a shared folder, but that's a bit out of the scope of this video. We'll do a follow-up video to teach you about that. Hey, thank you so much for watching to the end. Um, I would ask a favor of you. If you think we could make these tutorials better, uh, please do comment below. We do read through those comments and reply to them. So that's gonna really help us help you guys. So we love giving you know free support through email and other means, but if we can make instructional content that actually helps everybody without needing to email us, it just makes everybody's life better. So thanks guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheerio.